Hello everyone, uh, Mr Lebkowski here on a Sunday afternoon, just going to do some tutorial stuff for you on your new Steam compositions. Uh, now you will notice here, uh, so I've just had my dinner, very nice tasty bowl of soup. Um, you'll notice here we have our Chords and Cadences news uh, theme composition planning sheets, uh, which is on Show My Homework uh, for you to download. Uh, a lot of you have already printed this out, but it would be a good idea if you all of you print it out um, so you can use it as a reference guide so you know kind of what the terms we're using are, uh, which would be great. Um, just a quick recap. Obviously, chords, we use triads, these three note chords, major, minor, happy, sad. <clears throat> the use of Roman numerals, so it's important you learn your Roman numerals down here. Um, we are using primary major chords, one, four, and five and secondary minor chords two three and six now we're in C major and that's the key I've chosen for you it's the easiest one to play on the uh, keyboard if you are uh, already a piano player or a keyboard player or a guitarist and you want to be uh, using a different um, key as your a different chord as your number one uh, that's absolutely fine um, but you would have to then again go through the process on this sheet to work out your six uh, possible chords to use. Uh, you don't have to do this. It's just that I know that some of you, uh, if you want to be uh, being a little bit more, take a little bit more control, can do that. But for the most of you, you'll be using C major, F major, and G major, and there's the notes there that you'll use on the keyboard. And you'll be using D minor, E minor, and A minor. Now, as we've shown. You can compose millions of pieces with those six chords. Um, when you put those together, uh, it's called a chord sequence. Um, and obviously, music is like English in the fact that it needs punctuation. If you don't use commas and full stops, then your musical sentences don't really make very much sense. So in music, we have our full stop cadences. That's perfect. That's a five to one, or in your case, G to C. Or a plagal, which is a bit more religious sounding, it's called the Amen cadence, and that's called 4 to 1, which for you is F major to C major. Um, if you want to get a comma, so if in your new theme, for example, you're using a 16 chord um, a chord sequence, maybe after the 8th um, the chord, 7th and 8th chord, you want a, um, a imperfect cadence, so a musical comma. Um, so you can therefore want to make it, because a, 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 a comma makes you want to continue on. Okay, So an imperfect cadence doesn't sound finished, uh, so it makes you want to move you on into your chords 9 through 16, and maybe finishing with a perfect cadence. Um, you don't have to finish with a perfect cadence by any mean, um, but you might want to, again, otherwise your piece might not feel finished. Um, and obviously an interrupted cadence is that one that sounds a bit like a question mark or an exclamation mark. Um, uh, and you might want to do that. You might want to use that at the end of your piece and make it sound kind of interesting and dramatic um, with a with a different kind of cadence. I'm looking for you to actually have used cadences. And again, when we go onto this sheet, and again, it's available on Show My Homework. When you go onto this sheet <coughs> here, you'll see I've done an eight chord sequence, um, eight chords with uh, the two cadences, which is a perfect cadence there, five one G to C, perfect cadence, full stop. Uh, and you'll see the chord sequence I've um, chosen. Okay, I will be judging you, and your assessment will be based on: Have you chosen from those correct six chords? Uh, is there a cadence? Has it been done properly? And then I'll be judging you on things like the correct instrumentation, the plans you did about your um, new theme. So, what instruments you're going to use, and what kind of tempo are you going to go for, and the dynamics you're going to use. Um, then again, I'll be looking at those uh, and we'll be using them as part of your assessment. But we're certainly looking at you having used and showing that you understand these chords, these triad chords. And again, the use of those major and minor triads in combination to form our composition. Uh, on that sheet, you do have a couple of blank grids on the third page. So obviously, you print that out. Then the idea, the best idea is to actually start typing in or typing in or writing in your chord names, but also the Roman numerals and the chord notes. And all the information for that is above in the type table. So you don't have to memorize it. You can actually have a look, uh, and that should be not too tricky. Um, so just gone through that. We'll actually go through Cubase now. Let me just quickly... Uh, go off of that because we want to start a new project. Uh, so yes, hello by the way, I've had my hair cut. Um, it was getting quite long. Um, 
so with Cubase, um, I'm going to quickly just start Cubase 8. Um, <coughs> we always know with Cubase that it sometimes takes a little bit of a while to, to, to load. Uh, when it has loaded, you'll get this uh, pop-up. Okay. Now, we've just, you've done this in lessons, but again, I'll just quickly show you because it's easy to forget, especially if your notes that you've written down aren't as detailed as you might want them to be. So we go more, empty. We don't just press create. We've got to choose where we're going to save it. Okay. So for me, I'm going to go in into my drive here and I am going to uh, in my D drive. I'm actually going to save this on my F drive. And I'm going to save it, uh, I'm going to start a new folder, why on earth not, in my F drive, called News, whoops, Daisy. News Theme. Okay, News Theme. And then when I've clicked on that, it says News Theme. I'm then going to call it News Theme. So there's a folder called News Theme, and inside that folder is a folder called News Theme. So you've got News Themes in your News Theme folder. So you can find your work. Okay? You want to choose your server area. So I think for you it's the N, N for November, the N drive um, that you can use. So when you've done that, then you can press Create. Okay? Uh, if you've done it from the previous lesson, you just class Open Other, find your work from last lesson, and open it up. So we go Create. Now, this is where you'll stop seeing my face, so you can decide whether it's a bad thing or a good thing, uh, but it'll just be my voice now that you get as we're using Cubase. So, when we go in there, if it mentions anything to do with uh, registering, there's a little box that pops up and says, remind me later, uh, just get rid of that box, okay? Just don't need to register, it's already registered, but just get remind me later. Um, if you have a position where on your screen, there's this Quite a lot of your screen's taken up by this bit here, the rack. We go up into up here, set up window layout, and we get rid of racks. We untick racks. It maximizes the workable space we've got on Cubase there, okay, and means that you can just be, um, <clears throat> you know, seeing as much as you can. Um, Obviously, your screens are a little bit different shape than mine. Mine's obviously a wide screen, so you will have a little bit more squat. So you've got a slightly smaller area, all, more all the more important to make sure you maximize the screen area. Now, if you right-click, um, oh, sorry, zoom. If you have not um, maximized your window, okay, so if you go into Cubase, and it looks a bit like that, okay, the zoom controls are not down there. Can you see? I want the zoom controls because we'll need them for later. It's because the window has not been maximized. When I maximize the window, I can see those zoom controls. And they're going to become very important um, as we start looking through and editing and looking at our work. So it's important you've maximized the window to find, make sure you can see them. If we right click and hold down in this area, we see all the different tools, so scissors and glue and, and rubbers, so we can do some editing. We're not, we haven't recorded anything yet, so we don't need to edit anything. If we click here, it does the same thing. However, in this area here, if we right-click there, we get a menu, and we want to add instrument track. We're going to be adding in instruments, okay? So we click add instrument tracks. We want to add keyboard tracks. Now, here it says no VST instrument. You need to make sure you've gone onto that and click Halion Sonic SE. Okay? This is basically a collection of different sounds that you can uh, choose from. And we want five of those tracks. Now, you can add more afterwards, but for the moment, five is fine. Okay? That means that you can have five different instruments and record things for each of those instruments and have them played back at the same time. So you record them one by one but then it plays back like your own little mini personal orchestra, your little own personal band. So I'm going to click Add Track. When it adds these tracks, you get loads of pictures coming up of a pretty keyboard. Get rid of the pictures. You don't need them at the moment, okay? It'll just get confusing. Get rid. Now, everything at the top of the screen there is quite small. So I want to zoom in. Again, we talked about why maximizing window is important. I'm going to zoom in on this 
So I've just got, I can see those tracks as big as possible. There's, I mean, I'm using all the space on my screen for my actual composition. So, at this point, we have five tracks. Um, above no drum map, you'll see the words no drum map. Above no drum map, when you hover over, it says programs. And you need to left click above no drum map. Okay? When you first do this, you will just see a big long list of 1,000. 410 different sounds. Now that's too many. Okay, It's going to be too difficult to choose what you want. You'll be here for all year just picking which sounds you want. But the bottom button, which I've been mentioning, the bottom down there, if you turn on filters, that allows you to pick the kind of sounds you want. All right. So if I wanted, say, a piano, I could click piano. And that then gives me 34 different sounds all of them piano sounds okay if I click on one of them so say piano and strings layer and I just left click on that once okay and I play the piano then I can hear that that's strings and piano um, and that was lovely um, but I don't want that one I just want a standard normal piano so I'm going to go for the uh, Yamaha S90 ES piano, which I quite like. I'm going to click on it once, let it load. Yeah, and I, when, I, when you've chosen the one you want, you double click on it. And now, rather than it being a blank box, it says Yamaha S90 ES, so you can know. But I'm also going to click on the Halion Sonic SE01, double click, and I'm going to name it Piano. So I know that my piano sounds are going to be in there. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to click some of the other sounds I wanted. And I said I wanted some strings, so I'll go strings and section. And I might go for cinematic strings, why not? Have a listen to them. Yep, that's dramatic. And I'm going to double click on that. Oops, a daisy. And I'm going to call that strings. And then I click on here, and I'm going to choose some brass. Now, I wanted in my plan, I said I was going to have some brass playing the tune. So I'm going to have real brass playing the tune. And I'll have a listen to that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so I'm going to go in there and press in brass. Then I'm going to have some drums. And I said I, I kind of... Now, you obviously would have already planned what instruments you want, but I'm going to go drum set, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to choose... Uh, what am I going to choose? I'm going to choose Hip Hop Kit 2. Let's have a listen to that. Hmm. That's all right. I'm not overly 100% sold on that. So let's imagine that we have some kind of yeah, I don't know. Maybe some more dance music. Let's have a listen to the house kit one. That's the one for me. And I'll go on there. And again, you can choose which sounds you want. You can always change them afterwards, but you can choose the sounds you want. The last sound I'm going to go on is a thing called synth pad, which gives me an in some interesting kind of like synthesizer-y sounds. Because a lot of our... um. A lot of our kind of uh, news themes had kind of synthesizer-y sounds in the background to kind of make them sound a certain way. So let's have a listen to Titanium. I quite like that. Let's try a different couple. <laughs> uh, nope, don't want that. Sometimes it can take you a little bit of a while to find things you like. I'll just try this last one, Underworld. That's awful for what I want. Uh, let's try Titanium again. We'll keep it on Titanium, and I'm going to label that as Synth. So I've got five tracks. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, you have been looking at choosing 
a chord sequence. Okay, and if I just quickly click on that, you'll see that we want to get this kind of chord sequence. So for the moment, I'm just going to actually click in this chord sequence here. Okay. Now, if you are not, well, I've just dragged it off the screen, but I can still see it. Okay, and you'll have your chord sequence that you've hopefully chosen. Uh, and if you haven't, this this is a good way of choosing the chords you want. Now, in my top track on piano, okay, there's a little tab called chords, just there. Okay, um, and on chords, there's a little button that says chord pads. Click on that little button there the show high chord pad zone and it brings up some boxes which have the names of the chords you want and you only really need the ones in the bottom layer you don't need the ones above it just the bottom layer so we've got the chord of C got the chord of F got the chord of G7 now one thing you might want to do is click this arrow here and just unclick the 7 so it's just a normal chord of G Okay, don't worry about the seven. Uh, it's the seventh degree of the scale, which again, when if you choose music GCSE, you'll find out all about seventh chords and things like that. But for the moment, you might just want it to be G. Um, your F major, we've got D minor, E minor, and A minor. So that's our six chords. Now my chord sequence uh, that I chose was chord one, and all you can do is click and drag. I can click this chord and drag it into place, and it will play for me. If I have a listen to that. And this is a really helpful way of choosing your chord sequence. My chord sequence then went to A minor. Okay. I then went to F. And I then went to G. Then back to C. Now you might take a little bit of a while choosing these chords. G and C. Now you should notice I've got G, C. 5, 1, which is a perfect cadence. So I've got eight chords, perfect cadence. If I load back that up again, you'll see that the chords I chose, C, A minor, F, G, C, D minor, G, C, are the ones I wrote down on my sheet. Okay, And I'll be wanting to see that that's the same thing with you. And I can have a listen to those chords. So, pretty happy with them. Now, <clears throat> that is the end of this first session. Um, this is certainly, you should basically be able to choose your chord sequence, get it written down on your chords and cadences um, sheet. Uh, by the way, when you want to listen through to this or do anything else, you just get rid of that chord pad, knowing that you can get it back again by clicking the chord, chord pads there. Now, when you want to get back to like your normal control, you just click on the name here. And that takes you back to like your volume control and the, so you can change the instrument sounds. Okay. When we do anything we want to keep, we make sure we save it. So file, save as, make sure we save it in our area. For me, again, it's my new theme folder and I would call it new theme. But not only that, for me, the date today is the 19th of the 3rd, 2017. So I would call it 190317. So the date in short form. That means that I can see your progress every lesson, but it also sees that if, you, if there is an issue with a file and a, a file kind of gets corrupted or won't open, you're only ever going to lose one lesson's work rather than all of it. If you will do five lessons of work, on the last lesson you go to open it and it won't open, you've lost all your work. And there's nothing I could do about that. So you want to save um, at least once a lesson with a new file name. So then I can, I can open up and see what progress you've made, but also so you protect yourself from any file losses. And the computers do crash sometimes, so I'll press save. Okay, now imagine that that's what you need to get done in a lesson. Okay, so if you've just watched this, this video is 19 minutes, which should give you a good 15 to 20 minutes left to actually get that done. Choose your chord sequence, write it down um, on the third page of your chords and cadences sheet, uh, and go from there, really. Uh, so I will just therefore, hello again, here I am. Um, so yeah, that's the first session. Uh, and the next session, we'll go through how we turn those chords um, into a new theme. Because at the moment, it sounds like a set of chords. It doesn't sound like a new theme. Uh, and there's a very specific way to start looking at how we make it sound like a new theme. So uh, yes, excellent. See you next lesson. Bye.